which never existed in Vienna before, that he was both internationally connected. Yeah. Uh, because he was, what was very smart of him, what no other gallerist did, that he, uh, with first with Hetzler and then with Metro Pictures, he had kind of partnerships where he yeah. set his artists and he got their artists and so on. And that made made the career of those people yeah. you know, immediately. And this was this kind of, or this international internationalization, which happened in the 90s, no? That suddenly you, you saw it in a different perspective. All the institutions started to... Well, in Vienna, maybe. Started. I think, I think in, the, in, 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 other, in other places... It they, wasn't like that. In they, Cologne, you had... In Cologne, they were... Early on, uh, in New York, yeah. with New York and so on. And London also. Yeah. yeah. Well, London was not that that important. That important. Uh, it, it, it's very funny to, because today, London is a really important spot on the map, mm. but nobody was interested in there, huh? in the eighties and early nineties. Nobody was interested in, in okay. London. And I remember I once was in London by accident, and I bought a copy of the Garden. And there was a report on the Basel Art Fair, and it started with a sentence, my first word of advice is by British. <laughs> <laughs> and that's pretty much staying the same. <laughs> yeah, but now they have the power, you know, to, mm. but, but then, you know, there was nothing to mm. No, but, but in a way, the 90s, it allowed the 90s, the YBA phenomenon to happen, the fact that it had been getting yeah. in, an odd, in an odd way. I mean, it wasn't inevitable, but I think that the, the YBA movement happened the way it did, because there was nothing to stop it, in a certain sense. There was no, um, there was no establishment to resist it, really, or very small. Yeah. yeah. You, made, you made a show of the secession, 95, or one um, called the 90er Jahre. Um, yes. The 90s. Ah, it's a bit, oh, one of it's the a bit embarrassing. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, was just, I had no title and then I thought better show off than uh, <laughs> doing. Uh, so it was really not meant as a, as a serious <laughs> title. Oh, oh, yeah. an <laughs> I still stand fully behind the show and everything, but, but, um, um, um. but of course. Uh, uh, I thought it was a good idea because people were always so strategic and uh, how should we call this and so on and I just went for the bluntest, uh, uh, bluntest thing there was. And also it was already in the mid 90s so it was a kind of late late exhibition to define the Because we were talking about today that, that uh, Maria said that a lot was written about the 90s but I had always the impression there was something written uh, during the 90s, about the 90s, but later on, I don't remember that I was reading something, uh, uh, kind of analysis on the years after 89, you know, what happened after 89? Well, for me, uh, a lot of, uh, I mean, the, the title of the 90s makes only sense insofar that I was thinking about, I mean, I grew into the art scene in the 80s and I had those friends like Kippenberger, Oehlen, but also Chris Wool. Mm -hmm and others, and I was interested to see what had happened in the 90s and how can I relate to those things in the 80s. And it was interesting because I, I was always more interested in 80s artists that were uh, kind of more reflective of things because the art in the 80s was the successful art was really on a very dumb and strategic level, much, much like several uh, young British art or, or several successful people now. But then there was a group uh, who I thought was more interesting in the 80s. And, and then I took uh, Jutta Köter, Karen Kalimnik as a kind of example of, of a political mm -hmm. art. Uh, no, no, not Karen, of course, political art, but Marie McCarthy. Mm -hmm. She was uh, an activist in the 80s and so on, and I wanted to, to reflect on what, what had happened uh, between the 80s and the 90s. So, so uh, I wouldn't say that those three artists uh, are the most prototypical artists of the 90s, but I was interested in them because I wanted to make a connection 
which I also then wrote in the catalogue text about, you know, between people that interested me in the 80s and, mm -hmm. and, and, and then other people in the 90s. Okay. But, yeah. I don't know what uh, what discussions you had about former West, but uh, no. so maybe no, maybe we can have to to introduction to the so project we we're busy with now um, is called Former West uh -huh. as um, in some way counterparts to what we with no problems use for former East. Uh -huh. It has right. never been formulated. This right, kind of right, shift right, from right, the West yeah. towards former West we always, not be... we always think that the East changed, but never. Are we indeed? Yeah, I yeah. want to look at how the year 1989 actually um, caused or did not change in the West. And we originally set up a, a kind of a number of orientation points, nothing more than orientation points that were around political events of 1989. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, 2001, mm -hmm. we uh, more and more unsure about the meaning of 9/11. Actually, mm -hmm. culturally, Cult yeah. culturally, of course, and um, for this project, and um, and then uh, uh, another question mark is uh, autumn 2008, just the credit crisis mm -hmm. and, um, and change so those the big, big events. So for me, was we potentially, yeah, there might be other options. Right. Sorry. Right. These are just orientation points we're looking at now. But we, perhaps with every every new interview, we question this. Mm -hmm. uh, but so we're looking at 1989 as something that uh, changed the global condition. That doesn't. 1990. 1989. 89. Okay. Not the, not the year that changed something over there, mm -hmm. but something that. Um, um, in some way characterizes a new condition globally. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Um, we would like to, we're working towards an exhibition in 2012, mm -hmm. an international exhibition called Formal West, and the whole trajectory towards that um, we envision as a research where we work, three of us as, uh, as curators, speaking to people who in our opinion um, wrote that history post 1989, mm -hmm. We working with a number of institutions. Um, uh, 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 we put together a kind of institutional partnership with uh, Reina Sofia in Madrid, a Museum of Modern Art in Warsaw, and Fanaba Museum that Charles is a director of and Bach I run in Utrecht. But of oh, course, which one? Bach Basis for Actual Acoustic in Utrecht. Okay, okay. And of of course, much more important for us is a network of. Uh, um, research advisors that um, kind of walk this trajectory together with us and uh, correct us um, uh, whenever necessary. People like um, uh, Boris Groys and Goran mm -hmm. Schlohammer and Claire Bishop and Piotr Piotrowski and Simon Scheik and others. And then there's a separate group at the Utrecht University of uh, researchers from outside the field of contemporary arts. Yeah. The conflict studies, gender studies, etc., uh -huh. etc., et who also kind of adopted this this term "formal West" for one of their flagship research programs to look at um, at uh, what happens in their own particular disciplines, mainly philosophy, uh, humanities, social social sciences. Mm -hmm. So it's um, it's quite a uh, quite fascinating kind of. Research that's uh, already mm -hmm. already ongoing. I have to say that before we started to speak to people like you, we thought we knew more than than we feel we know now. So, what we what we originally thought we would like to chart the development in art and culture from 1989 till 2001. Mm -hmm. We called it back then um, uh, a long decade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See whether these political events. Um, in the beginning and the end of this period, mm -hmm. play a role uh, mm -hmm. in, in the artistic production. And then much more speculatively looking at the period post-2000-2001. So I guess this is what we, what we would like to, like to discuss, and we have a huge number of questions, and it's probably uh, not ordered properly yet, because we're indeed in that stage of figuring out how I'm sure I won't be able to, to answer all, but we can try. I mean, what's interesting for me is that if you talk about uh, uh, the time
title for the West um, in terms of contemporary art, then I think of it as a um, kind of interesting enrichment what happened if I talk about general cultural and political things then I'm getting maybe more pessimistic because then former West uh, then I start to be nostalgic and uh, moan about about the lack of rationality we have now which is interesting because in, in the arts I think people became more political aware mm -hmm. And in general cultural terms, you know, like, uh, for example, in the German-speaking world, um, this kind of horrible folk music mm -hmm. that was always existing on a margin mm -hmm. became suddenly really centralized yeah. and, and yeah. is now, uh, if you turn on German mm -hmm. TV, it's every day on and so on. So it's a, it's a, it's a step back in a, in a very mm -hmm. serious, mm -hmm. serious thing. So, so I think that they're very mixed mixed developments mm -hmm. going on, you know, and it's interesting that the fine arts uh, took the role of uh, kind of political enlightenment, mm -hmm. but it's missing from the general discourse in mm -hmm. many ways, that's how I... Mm -hmm. And also from the political sphere, no? I yeah. Not only from the, the sort of mass cultural sphere, but from the political sphere. I mean, do, do, you, do you see those moves as related? Well, I don't know whether the fact that that fine arts became more politicized in a way is also, I would guess that it's also a reaction to, mm. uh, so people are retreating to a certain field of culture to live on their kind of critical practices mm -hmm. and uh, more political leftist practices and then the political leftist practices become also strange because then they're suddenly on an island and, and, and uh, are in the manifestas and so on but, but not in the, in, the, in the big political discourse. Yeah, yeah. Because I think that, that I mean, that's one... It, 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 I suppose the project is, 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 is trying to find a model that adequately describes what happened after 1890. Yeah, because yeah. I think what we... What we what tends to happen is that we sort of live in the confusion of the contemporary, in a sense, mm -hmm. in, which, in which you can basically find at any contemporary moment, you can find everything, you know, and that's always been true pretty much throughout history, in a sense, but it's what's the dominant developments rather than the, 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 the minor chords, mm -hmm. you know? <coughs> or the minor keys which are happening. And, and, um, and so this, this project, is the, the idea of this project, or the ambition of this project, to what extent we can realise it needs to be seen, but the ambition of this project is to try and find the major the major keys in which in mm -hmm. which things have happened since the 1990s, and one of the narratives that, that I think we came with, and we're still testing out, is that narrative, which is a narrative that politics is evacuated from, or the political is evacuated from politics. And yeah. Politics becomes another kind of discussion, mm -hmm. basically about management, the efficiency of, of, of managing uh, a hegemonic e economic model, you know, mm -hmm. which is not only capitalism but this version of capitalism, and. And then, how do you respond to that if you're not totally happy with the situation? Right. Uh, and one way seems to have been to become an artist, or even more, somebody involved with the arts, so a right. curator or writer or something like that. And I suppose, you know, one of the real interests in, in, in talking to you is that you have this kind of dual life, yeah? You also have this semiotics world uh, beside it. Linguistic. Uh, linguistic. Yeah. So. Um, so, you know, what was it, how do you see the relationship between the art world and say the academic world changing in that period if you do see changes and what and how would you how would you typify those changes how how would you it's a big question i know but i think we could probably try and unpack it later well um Maybe let me start with the 80s, uh, mm. although that's not the topic, but there is this, it would help. That's what this, <laughs> this Hal Foster article, which I always like, it's, it's a minimal art, I don't remember the title exactly, where Foster is basically moaning about the fact that uh, Reaganism and Thatcherism and this rightward movement caused a kind of giving up mm. uh, 
minimal art or conceptual art, maybe too uh, reflective art in general, and then you have the uh, neo-expressionists and so on mm -hmm. that are just completely unreflective and they took over basically and, and others were really for the whole decade somewhere in the underground, in the, in the art world underground at least. And um, what I think is interesting that we have a situation now where uh, we have both the kind of critical minimalist conceptual art based art situation and the purely money uh, surface, uh, I don't know, uh, East German painter tradition mm -hmm. or whatever, you know. Yeah. And that's an, that's an interesting change because I, I always thought that, that uh, before that or even in the 80s it was kind of, of a natural movement that uh, one kind of 70s, 60s, 70s uh, uh, artistic approach went down and the other one came up and that was a really clear a direct relation with the political yeah. situation, mm -hmm. whereas now it's very hard to define mm -hmm. this, this mm -hmm. clear mm -hmm. relation between art and politics. Mm -hmm. So that's... that's mm -hmm. I think that's... You know, I think we're struggling with that. Or is there, is there a relationship anymore? And, and if there's, because that relationship between art and politics you can trace back to the 19th century. I mean, it's not only in the 60s or 70s. It's a similar relationship, I think, that can be seen through the... Well, it's, it's hard because, because, I mean, I was last week, I was in New York in a symposium at the New Museum about, about um, 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 museums and the future of the museum. And what struck me there is that people were constantly talking about the political role of the museum and what to do about this but they didn't really address artistic, aesthetic questions or whatsoever. Mm -hmm. And I find this sometimes bizarre that, that there is this one art crowd that really doesn't care about what a good painting is or, mm -hmm. what, or, or, or those things, but they're really just... And by this, people are avoiding to define art at all, and this is the dangerous thing because then the definition of art is again the East German yeah. post-communist. So, so that's that's why I'm I'm sometimes very skeptical about about mm -hmm. uh, contemporary developments. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And this and this is I mean now to, to come to the nineties. Um, um, I was for me the nineties in an artistic sense are. Uh, artists that showed with Colin Deland, uh, um, his wife, and with Christian Nagel in Cologne then. Mm -hmm. And there it was always, uh, it was fascinating because I, I knew or know these people quite well. And they started as a kind of revival of conceptual art or something like this, a politicized art. Okay. You mean Olin Kippenberg or people like that? No, 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 I mean, I mean, um, um, René Green, okay, uh, okay. Christian Philip Mündler, Klegen Goodman. Zobanik also. Zobanik in a way, he was yeah. also, he was like, uh, mm -hmm. he, he was the one who did best in jumping from the mm -hmm. 80s program to the mm -hmm. 90s program in a way. Uh, and then it was interesting because of course those people after a while they were quite successful, mm -hmm. but then they started to fight among each other big time. Mm -hmm. and. For me, watching this uh, from the outside, it was always that, for example, Renee Green had a position where she always was thinking about aesthetic aspects of her artwork and she was <coughs> doing sentimental stuff, whereas other people just made this kind of substitution of sociology, a substitution of politics projects that left out Aesthetic questions, Aesthetic questions yeah. and, and, and yeah. other things completely, and I think they have won mm -hmm. in the end, mm. in, a, in, a, yeah. in a way. Mm. 
Yeah, it's a, maybe a Pyrrhic victory, no? <laughs> because it's a victory on a small scale. It's, sure, know. but it's, it's. I mean... Because, well, because also the art world, the aesthetic world has gone on with huge strength through the 2000s. And I suppose it's still, maybe to, to sharpen the, the, the debate of the question, it's still, what you said I think was really important, that, that you can track the development, at least since the 60s and 70s, maybe earlier, between art and politics. And yeah. when certain yeah, political sure. strands come up, then art allows, is, is allowed, in a sense, or given certain permissions. So, you know, there are always these artists around, but at certain time, certain artists are given certain permissions to do things, and then later on, they're no longer given permission. So, in the 80s, you know, Lawrence Wiener and Dan Graham were still around, yeah. and they, they just, nobody was given the permission to do anything. Um, but, then, but then, after 89, this... This no longer this no longer functions in a way. No, that's what you're saying. But yeah, that, that, that yeah, relationship yeah. no longer functions. Yeah, and I think that that the most important development was those young American artists and so on. That kind of or Andrea Fraser is also yeah. an important name in this connection for the nineties. That brought back uh, was really important because uh, then suddenly this kind of. Uh, stupidity that you had in, in the Neuen Wilden and, the, and those yeah. people was really challenged by those people. But then immediately you could start to see two strings in the development. Yeah. Some that were really just begging all their money on political neoconceptual things that didn't mm -hmm. take care about the form. Which of course happened earlier, you know, in, in other ways like for example Kusuth um, also, at some points, he didn't care about the form, but then his work became completely yeah. kitschy enough. Absolutely, right. Yes. Right. Absolutely, yeah. Absolutely. And but but this intensely form. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so so, yeah, that's what usually happens, you know. If you don't, uh, <laughs> yeah. if you just bet on one side, then you you lose Those control the of the other yeah. side. Yeah. 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 Can I ask one thing to add to this? We talk about decades now. We talk about 1980s you know, were changed through 1990s, etc. How, how does the year 1989 play, play to this? Is it just a mere coincidence that it's at the end of the 1980s? Well, or does I think the 80s were in the West, they put an extreme stress on the West, you know, like you had West Kunst and so on, <laughs> and go. it was always the self-understanding of the Cologne people, for example, yeah. that together with New York, they form mm. the West somehow. That was it. Yeah. That was it. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and I remember talking to, I had a long conversation after 89 with Imandorf, and he was completely aggressive about anything coming from the East. And he said, people will need many, many years until they reach a level that can compete with our practices and so on. And, and Even with his relation with Pank and things like that, well that was based on his relation with Pank. Maybe yes, because Pank was, was the good, good, good yeah. uh, exception there. You know? Okay, right. And he was the kind of, uh, I mean he was a dissident or so on, but he was protesting it and then they brought him free yeah. and so on. Okay. Yeah. But I was really surprised by this. Mm. And um, and I became um, became first interested uh, in things happening in the East when I looked at mostly video or photo works from former Yugoslavia. That was my, mm -hmm. my connection, which means that I feel for me that I still, because I think they were relatively close to a Western context, so I was also, I mean, to answer your question, I was... Uh, puzzled and couldn't understand what was going on. I met, I, I, I met this, uh, I met this uh, Russian artist group, the Championi Mira, or a young Russian artist group, and they were, they were, I liked them a lot. Oh, Championi Mira. Mira, Championi Mira. Mm -hmm. I liked them a lot because they were so radical and, and crazy and so on, uh, and I loved to talk to them and, and hear their crazy things, by the way, I think they all became very nationalistic then later on, yeah. uh, which was kind of sad for me, uh, but I couldn't relate to the 
to the concrete artistic practices. Uh, to the aesthetics. In the yeah. yeah. But the interesting thing is that Yugoslavia, it is interesting in looking up to Yugoslavia because Yugoslavia was block free. They had, they were yes. extremely in, 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 informed. If you talk with Sunny Ivekovic, they were really informed what's going on um, internationally. So this is, I think it's, a, it's an, it's, it's, it's maybe the right um, access to, to this. Yeah, it must be more. I thought about this yeah. because, for example. Hungary was also quite open yeah. and people could even travel and so on and they were always yeah. internationally connected but there yeah. nothing yeah. interesting yeah. or very little yeah. interesting yeah. things happened. Yeah. It was really yeah. for some reason yeah. uh, excuse, excuse, excuse love, yeah. So what did 89 mean from the West? If anything. Art. We're talking art oh. still. So I guess always. Um, <laughs> well, we can, uh, no, I mean, I think we also talk about that, the other thing. Yes. At the moment, we're talking about. <laughs> so I think at first it was this kind of adversive thing, you know, what's coming there, okay. and and uh, then, of course, you know, the the Eastern things were always on people's mind. Or, for example, in my mind, like the Polish conceptual artist, uh, of course, Russian avant-garde, or so on. So this I could understand, but I. Uh, so I would, at least for myself, I would also claim that there was a big deal of irritation simply, you know, and, and um, non-understanding. You know. mm. Irritation about what are these people doing? What are they doing and uh, why don't I understand this and this and this, you know. And I remember uh, also then later with Katrin and so on, she showed me things which now I start to understand a bit more precise, mm. but I... I needed a long, long time to, to be able to relate to them because I, I think at least in my brain things form very slowly and then I, I can have judgments and all mm. the things. You know. But when Immendorf said that oh, they'll need a long time to get up to our to level, up. did that feel reasonable or did that feel, feel did that surprise you? No, I mean, Immendorf was, was, I mean, he always was, which is not always visible in his art, but he, he is a person who came from the German left and uh, I mean, he knew his politics all the time. Yeah, Cafe Deutschland, yes. Yes. yes, even earlier, the yeah. Lidl things yeah. or so. Yeah. That, that's, uh, um, and his idea was clearly that they, because he always thought, even even not only Cafe Deutschland, but every painting in his mind was based on hard political thinking, which mm -hmm. is arguable, but I mean, that's what he thought at least. and. And uh, so for him, those people lacked this, uh, lacked kind of the leftist uh, critical experience, and mm -hmm. therefore they were not able to produce art. That, that was, I mean, we cannot ask him anymore, but that, no. that, that's what I would guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but, but how did you react to it? When you heard it, did it just seem reasonable? Can you remember? I, I, I thought it, it was reasonable, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, absolutely. Wasn't yeah. it around um, the show After the Wall also? That, um, when was After the Wall? 99. Oh, no, it was too, too late. You know. I remember also that after, after, oh, yeah, after the, the Wall, there was again well. this, this um, discussions that it's not really so interesting what's coming from former East. You know, it's, um, so in, in, in the former Western... Um, and the point, I mean, I mean, I mean maybe, maybe, sorry, just yeah, to, to, yeah. Because, because just to stick on this a bit, you know, with what, what Maria asked is about how, what happens in the West, or the, what we yeah. call the former West at the moment, trying to make a distinction. And one thing, Chris, is you were very involved in Cologne yeah, in the 90s. Now, if you go to Cologne today... Uh -huh. <laughs> Everyone's gone. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, something happened. Yeah? The, the, yeah. If, we, if we say in the 80s the West was represented by New York yeah. and Cologne, Cologne. Yeah. Cologne then, then by a certain point in the late 90s, early 2000s, that, that is an absurd statement. I mean, partly it's absurd to say New York represents the West. But it's certainly absurd to say that Kern represents the West. Well, Charles, I, I mean, <laughs> one thing... Or maybe not, I mean, but... I mean, one, one thing, uh, maybe that this still doesn't answer your question, but we can talk more, is that um, I remember that in the 90s already the Berlin discussion started, yeah. you know, everyone moving to Berlin and so on. And I was and still am to a, some part really skeptical because I always loved Cologne with 
the liberal collectors and so on, open-minded, as a kind of locus for an art discourse. Yeah. And I thought and still think partly that, although it's, it's, it's not completely true, that in general the Prussian Berlin tradition is not so interesting for the art, mm. but it had to happen at some point. But I was for, for years I was hoping that yeah. that Cologne could stay alive. So I would maybe describe the death of Cologne as an art center and the rise of Berlin as the one of the major things happening in the West. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But is it really that one center is replaced by another, or is it another sort of movement happening? No, well, I think I think there are always, you know, that I think that's still important, you know, that we have we have those centers that started Berlin, uh, Paris, then New York took over, then Cologne was a bit there, and now we have London, uh, Berlin, New York, still to some extent, <coughs> and that that's that's always very defining for art, I think. But what happened with? the so-called periphery in, in the 90s, you know, uh, places like Glasgow, Warsaw, um, uh, Copenhagen, um, well, they, also they, Vienna. <coughs> they were uh, rising in a way, mm -hmm. you know. And I remember when I was for the first time in Warsaw looking at, I mean, I went with Pakish actually to visit some old conceptual artists and so on. Mm -hmm. and yeah. 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 And do some research there, but then I immediately uh, we came to some spaces, and that was actually my first encounter there. That was really important, you know. To to I think it it was not possible to understand Eastern artistic practices without being there actually and seeing it, because because the if you if you transfer the artworks into a Western context or space, then they're really different. So that was that was uh, kind of important. And before, for example, I was uh, before uh, uh, the wall went down. I was quite often in East Berlin and so on, and I also had some friends or acquaintances uh, in the art scene there many of which later turned out to be heavy Stasi collaborators and so on. But I had very little res I mean, I liked them as persons, mm -hmm. but I had very little respect for them because I really felt, felt that they were behind and they did kind of printing techniques and so on and, mm -hmm. and just mm -hmm. this kind of... Well, as it is now, this yeah. expressionistic mm -hmm. uh, kind of jazz that I really hate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm still trying to get get at this, this, this because I think this division between art and politics, because the yeah. fact that art no longer relates to politics, seems to me to be a major development. Yeah, art relates to politics throughout modernism, in a sense. Yeah? I think that there's a strong relationship. Well, I think it, it's it's, but basically, I think it's because it's a sats yeah. for politics. Yeah, you know, that that makes it really catastrophic in a way. That's then, true. But what you said is, the, which I think is very true, mm -hmm. is these two developments go run in parallel. In other words, yeah. you no longer have in an opera, you no longer have to make at least the art world no longer makes an ideological choice. Yeah. And no longer says this and that. So, yeah, both. Yeah, we can have you know we have the red flag and we can have the swastika and yeah. it's fine. I mean, yeah, I mean, right. the, but, but you know they can fly next to each other. You know, they're both quite attractive, aesthetically pleasing designs or whatever. <laughs> but but I mean, the, 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 there's no longer this this question of, of making the choice, yeah. which was which was which was dominant in modernism yeah? because there's always an avant-garde that says no, this stuff is wrong and we're right. Yes, yes, and this was still in the eighties that that people. Of course, uh, uh, minimalists and conceptualists were absolutely fighting the neo-expressionist. Yeah. Uh, so there was still a war going on, yeah. which is now. Uh, yeah. I mean, ask Damon Hirst; he's going to love uh, any critical art, or no problems. Yeah. So. Yeah. It w I mean, it wouldn't be any any there wouldn't be any reason to resist it. It's a, it says so. Oh. Well done. Go on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's all good. And, and, and that seems to me to be a reflection of the, the, 
the, the, the depoliticization of, the pol of, of politics, yeah. or the, the removal of the political from politics. Because if politics doesn't matter, or if of course it matters, but if politics doesn't have anything to say anymore, then art no longer can relate to it somehow. Right? Yeah. Which seems which seems to be a consequence of 89 in some ways, because it seems to happen around the same time. You know, that, that, and I don't know whether it's a coincidence, but that this seems to happen at the same time. You know, Immendorf can say, okay, the socialist people, the people living in socialist states, never had any proper socialism, but he didn't have any socialism anymore. Right, right, yeah. <laughs> you know, it, it, it's like he was as bereft yeah, but as they were. That's a typical <laughs> symptom of uh, leftists that they... <laughs> Uh, can feast on champagne and caviar, and they still know that somewhere in the back <laughs> that was that they can live on. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know what? One, uh, maybe one more. Uh, um, um, uh, I'm becoming a bit anecdotal, but That's good. one thing was when uh, Merlin Carpenter had his show in the Secession. I don't, you were still there already? Um, I was. I was still, on leave. Yeah, it was in between a uh, yeah. manifesto and. Uh, and Merlin, who's an artist I respect, and so on, and it was the, the time just maybe one, two or three months after the uh, right, extreme right coalition in Austria. In 2000. Yeah. yeah. And so Merlin, with his friend Anthony, they were really, he was really insecure whether he should come to Austria at all, and then they wrote a very nice, re, re, very harsh little text at the entrance of the of the exhibition and I totally respected Merlin for doing this but at the same time I had this feeling that it's a bit ridiculous you know mm -hmm. to to do this because already the the split was so far that it was a kind of additional yeah. additional piece of art yeah, yeah. and not not a, a, a political statement yeah, yeah. And that's very hard you know to yeah. make a political statement with the art is mm. a hard thing. And I think still it's most successful there where artists just with their media and with their art torture the media or what, do whatever and so on and it's directly visible from, from the, also from the formal practices mm -hmm. and so on. That, that's why I'm still a big fan of my old friend Albert Oehlen because I still have the feeling that he's, he's doing with painting and he's developing new strategies of painting that are far more political than some political label, politically labeled uh, practices that you find around. Yeah, no, I mean, I really sympathize with that, I think. It, it, it's more to try and understand that this, that, 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 that if politics is back, you know, the, the, the political leaves politics, but that leaves leaves art or, or the tradition of modernist art somehow un, unrooted yeah. because, because its relationships being with yeah, politics. Yeah, yeah. And on the one hand, there's this move to to try and occupy that vacuum. Yeah? The politics leaves, and you go, oh God, what are we going to relate? Right. To? We better become political, <laughs> which I which I have sympathy with in, in as a I, you know emotionally. I say, yeah, that's, that's right. Yeah, that you sh you have to do that. Probably, or not, you have to do that, but it makes sense to do it. Yeah. It's the logical consequence of, oh God, there's no, but there's no politics anymore that we can work with, so we better make it ourselves somehow. And on the other hand, you have those people that say, okay, well, we'll just whatever system it is, we'll, we'll, we'll fit into it. But what's interesting is that these two then coexist for the, right. for the last 20 years and continue, I think, mm -hmm. to coexist mm -hmm. somehow. Mm -hmm. And so I suppose the question is then if that's the if, 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 if art, I'm just thinking out loud here, you know, I'm really thought, but if art becomes unrooted from the political, then where is its roots now? What, what, what are its roots in the Western art if it's not politics? Which seems to have been, I mean, of course, historically there was religion, which was, which was its root. I mean, if we talk about the pre-modern period, it's, a, it's, of course, different things. But in a sense, art has to be rooted somewhere. No? It can't. It's, it's not autonomy. I don't really believe, I don't, any of us believe yeah, there's it's, no it's autonomy of art. I mean, an so where could it be rooted? I mean, one aspect which is important, I think, is that the, the kind of only connection to the political and economical is, is the market now. Yeah. That's why people love to talk about the market like crazy. Yeah. It's, it's really not that interested. I mean, I was 
when this first uh, auction happened, I was really annoyed. I, I, I didn't pick up the phone anymore because everyone wanted to talk about this. And it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a discussion that's that's I mean it's a, it's a short laugh or so, on, but but people took it really important, and I think that's symptomatic for for, for the yeah. problem you are addressing. Yeah. And that seems to be a problem of this thing called the former West, if we have. Yeah, yeah, it yeah, seems yeah, to be yeah, one, of the, yeah. one of the one of the one of the the things that maybe you know we, we do we do see as that, as I'm, and it's partly to try and map what the consequences of that being maybe in this bifurcation somehow mm -hmm. of of, of uh, or this just this 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 sort of bland tolerance to everything. Yeah. Partly as long as it survives in the e economy, you know, and so if 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 Christian Philipp Müller or, or whoever um, can get economic support from some you know, source, whether it's state or, or, or private, then that gives it a right to exist, and you know they right. can go great, yeah, carry on, yeah. do it. And if you can't get any support from the, from the market, so you can't make your work, then, you don't, then it doesn't exist. Then that's that's a statement of its quality in a sense, or a statement of its of its of its, uh, of its interest. Yeah, I don't. I don't know whether the, whether it is then everything's rooted in the economy or something at that point. You know, the, the, the economy replaces politics as the thing that art's dealing with. Whether it's the yeah, but that's why why the only connection to yeah, politics the market, is, yeah. is the market. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Or or the the, 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 the the survival of social democratic structures that fund art, yeah, because that's how yeah, right. a lot of the the. You know, in a sense, outside of the argument, the more reflective side survives. Yeah, even in America, yeah, Rene Green is pretty dependent upon subsidies from well, the social democratic like, Europe. Heads of school and the, yeah. does everything like this, you know, and, and uh, yeah, that's a, that's a huge problem that, that uh, those people. I mean, Rene maybe does it on purpose too because she could do more, maybe or so, and she relaxes it and yeah. leans back. But 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 other people. And you know, one one other thing um, about the current situation is that I think due to the fact that politics happens inside art now, uh, many young artists uh, are becoming extremely cautious. In the artistic practices, and that's what's what's boring me very often. That yeah. that, that there are certain, you know, that there are the rules of politics in an abstract way, of course, and everyone obeys them and plays in this playground. But there are no violations or very little violations, mm -hmm. and that's you know the the what in the nineties in the catalog. I remember I wrote about transgression or something like this. Think about the term trans yeah. transgression, who's transgressing these days, nobody. Yeah, also you wouldn't, and it's also not a term which is used, you yeah. don't read about yeah. it anymore. Yeah. It was also astonishing for me, if I looked at your catalogue again, that this term is not an issue anymore. Yeah. Not in this I was clearly wrong, you were <laughs> putting so much yeah. weight on The show was in a secessionist Yeah, it was a kind of, it was not a secession show, it was the the years when they had Austria had this famous state curators that were given zillions and could spend them on the most crazy projects, and, and I, I mean that, that's a dream. I, I from my friend, from my friend uh, Kathe Pichler, she says you get this money for doing an exhibition, you do whatever you want. That's it. You know, that's and also for the institution, it was <laughs> absolutely. And it doesn't exist anymore. No, 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 no. I mean, there were. Was Fleck the last one? No, the, uh, uh, still, oh, no, the, the, the Zingli? Zingli, yes. who's now and heading, he's the uh, Green, Party. Green Party cultural speaker and so on. And, and that was interesting that, that then, that's maybe a good, good point also, because those last people who did it, mm -hmm. They were not uh, supporting projects like this and this, but they were creating institutions, mm -hmm. basically. So they were creating yeah. institutions which were clear, not, mm -hmm. clearly not going away after they finished their term, so yeah. to speak. Yeah. 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 And of course then the, the politician says, well, we, uh, this is not the meaning of this, and it yeah. was stopped also. Yeah. Yeah. Which was really, really sad because it was 
the fun part of the concert was to really do some crazy thing and yeah. and and uh, Katrin said, well, I'm interested in this, so you do something from your position, and that was it. I mean, my yeah. my my exhibition was up for three weeks yeah. or so, very short t time or so, but I could do it yeah. with a catalogue and everything. And there's a catalogue, so it's something yeah. we can yes. refer to. Yes. The bilingual text. Yeah. With the wrong birth date of your yes. Dakota. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> it's with me forever. Later, I'm there. Yeah. <laughs> But this institution, one, one thing we're trying to do is to map the, the various categories of stuff. You know, what, which one is institutions, two are exhibitions, three are, three are Artists. artworks, Artists. Artists. Art Artists. Art Artists. also the discourses that are going on, the, 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 the galleries that are, that are leading. So I've been trying to map things like that. So maybe with institutions, do you, over that 20 years, uh -huh. Which do you see have been as a writer and as somebody engaged in art? Which, which have been other institutions, or has your relationship to institutions changed? And what what have been the key institutions you've looked to? If you think back to Köln in the in the early nineties through to today. Well, I think that uh, if we start with a gallery uh, and things you already said before, you know, when the. Uh, uh, market took over to a certain extent. I mean, the gallery was in a way the ideal laboratory, right. much better mm -hmm. than any uh, laboratory that people it's like us can think of. Yeah. Yeah. From today's perspective, and, well. and then you know, now now the case is I'm quite often I'm supporting young artists who I really like, and I run to galleries, and I hope that they respect my opinion and mm -hmm. so on. So I talk to them take this, this is really interesting. And then they said, yeah, well, if this person who's just 27 finished art school or so um, has had a show at the secession, then I take her or him or so. Okay. And that's, that's, I mean, yeah. that's in the 90s you never total, yeah, that. total perversion of yeah. the, of the yeah. 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 So the galleries have become more conservative. Yes, and more dealer dealer like institution. Yeah. And they they want they want to place an institution like the Secession now to do the laboratory work. Yeah. Yeah. And then they come and cash in. Take the profits, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can see it also the Secession, you know, if you uh, if they show young, not yet established artists, suddenly like yesterday evening Galleries are showing up. Like yeah, yeah, we yeah. never have seen. Then they start to get greedy. Yes, yeah, since many many years, you know. So this is, and that's a session. So it's well, but it's time. it's replaceable yeah. also. You yeah. know that the, the they have a, a project room in the museum. That's also a source mm -hmm. of, of, of uh, if you, and, and and that's that's really that's really uninteresting because also that's uh, uh, an aspect of the. Depoliticization of, of art that that then it's just some museums curators or, or at least in the secession it's it's a, it's a board of artists who decides this but but uh, it's not the plurality that you have yeah. gallery A who does this program gallery B who does the other program and they fight with each other and so on and that, that, that's of course much more pluralistic and more interesting mm -hmm. in a certain sense. And what, 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 if you were to name some key institutions in that period, could, would that would that be possible, or is it really artists that are the the, the markers? You know of, of how I mean, we've talked about Kippenberg at Olin, we've talked about that that early nineties René Green, Christian Pedit Muller. Uh, well, for the for the nineties, clearly the most important institutions were uh, Collins Gallery, American Fine yeah. Arts, Pat Hearn, and Christian Nagel. Yeah. They were the most innovative, yeah. and 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 they also brought a, a, a completely other style, and they were so important because after the eighties, where things in the end got very commercialized, they were like uh, uh, crazy entrepreneurs and 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 just did what they wanted to do. And do I remember when I first met Colin in New York, we went to to one of the big Soho places and so on, and he brought with him. Uh, uh, collectors and tried to sell them art and in the end of the evening he came to me and said listen I almost sold the artwork 
but now I have to collect the, uh, to invite the collectors and I have no money on me, please help me out. And, and so this, this was a style, you know, which was uh, also completely unthinkable of today. That was like the, in 91 yeah. or something. Yeah. Do you think that at the end of the 80s there was a crisis in the art market? Um, yes. So maybe it, it, did this affect also the way how the galleries defined themselves in the, in the first half of the 90s, that they made more, were more open, more experimental? Um, that it did. Well, the crisis in the 80s was uh, not a real crisis, I think. It was a secondary market mm -hmm. crisis mainly, mm -hmm. and and I mean, uh, the victims were like Chris Wool was a victim mm -hmm. because they dealt with him and and so on uh, without his mm -hmm. approval in, in a sense. Um, but that was that was a in so far and it was a healthy because it was a pseudo crisis in a way that just some crazy numbers were were gone, you know, but. But it was not that suddenly nobody sold anything or so on, and and um, that has never happened since. And I think this mm -hmm. this created. I mean, now I'm starting to to talk in economical terms about the art, but the bubble became bigger. Mm -hmm. It was a very it was a kind of mini bubble then, yeah. and and it was just some some dealers who overdid it. And mm -hmm. But it basically recovered quite fast. Yes, right. yes, within a few years. Yeah. Mm. But there was, so, so, so there was, just to try and plot the plug out that trajectory as you saw it. Yeah? So, so the galleries, uh, American Fine Art, uh, um, Christian Nardo. Those were very important. Mm -hmm. And then, then, of course, for the 90s, no, then the Kunstverein became very important. Yeah. I completely forgot about this. Yeah. You know, it's like yeah. Kunstverein Munich or so on, that was a really important thing. Raxler did and, 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 oh, and those things. And Saxon Huber. Yeah, Saxon Huber, yeah, sorry. But also in Stuttgart, no? Farid and Uta Mitterbauer, not really. Within the German perception, yes. In the German perception, yes, but they already started, you know, Praxler did a nice compromise because he always did spectacular shows and so on. But they then started, and they're guilty of those, especially Farid and Uta Mitter, that they started this completely, uh, you know, there were like a mini parliament in Stuttgart and they discussed mm -hmm. politics there, or a mini university mm -hmm. or so on. Mm -hmm. And that was really started to become detached from mm -hmm. aesthetic questions and so on. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't, for me it was not, a, I mean, I'm talking now, you're right that it was important yeah. for yeah. the discourse, but I'm yeah. no, but, but, talking about my own yes. taste. Yes. And, and what but what, but what? Um, Eddie and and and, uh, and Helmut that we're doing in, uh, in wasn't Helmut thing? first and then Eddie? <laughs> <laughs> I think he was more like more or less assisting Helmut. I yeah, they were at the okay. same time. Right? Yeah. Okay, okay, yes. okay, okay. Yes, they worked at the same time. Yes, right? yes no, no, they were at the same time. Yeah. So I mean, I mean, of all the Kunstvereine, that was the most. I thought it was the the most interesting. Uh, uh, then the most interesting model of a Kunstverein. Yeah. And was what, that what Hamburg became much later with uh, what's his name? Uh, yes, Jermatt. Jermatt. Yeah. 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 So he took Jermatt. over the. Yeah. So. So just 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 to, to get it down because I think it's going to be important. So so the Kunstverein in, in München was in, in a way the first institution as an institution. Yes. Mm -hmm. That you would that you would yeah. say okay you know in a sense whatever they were doing like like you would say with Colin Deland okay Colin Deland is American fine arts is doing something interesting then I don't know the name but probably well it's then it was more know. important also because Traxler mixed people yeah more radically than any gallery could do yeah so there was Chris Williams and Rea Fraser yeah. yeah. Michael Kreber or I yeah. don't know if Michael was then but, but yeah but it could be painting and it could be yeah yeah. 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 And then, so that's that's mid nineties, really, isn't mm -hmm. it? It's, it's up until ninety six, ninety seven, something like that. Go on, no. <laughs> think how far we can get. <laughs> I have to think. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I know it's spontaneous. It's kind of spontaneous much, as well. You know, I mean, Hamburg was later. When did he start there? Two thousand and ish. 
2002. Okay. Yeah. So that was later. This, but, but I also went to just two exhibitions or so, but this I, I, I got the program. That's true, that. it took over some of yeah. the directions. Yes, that's, yes, that's yes, yes. Interesting way of getting it, it's true. And it's but, also but, really from the West, you know. He was very much into um, continuing it. Yeah. yeah. That's a Turkish power. <laughs> <laughs> um, but but um, but it's also about what you what you. It's not necessarily about traveling. It's also because each, each person has their own map, like you say, like 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 uh, the the Kuzla House and Stuttgart is for you not important, but for other people it is. But it's also really what you were what you were looking at. You know, even if you were in, in Vienna and you were working on your linguistics in those days, that but what was it that you you know what was it that that, that caught your attention? I don't know. Was, was or was it that when was, the time was when I became really bored with big thematic exhibitions. Yeah. And I always thought, you know, that, that was a big debate we once had, actually, I remember this years ago, when you said, well, big thematic exhibitions are not possible anymore, the times had passed. And I thought, no, they're just done in the wrong way. You what? should do it. And that's what I still think, you yeah. know, I mean, maybe you do it now. But so which, which one? Which ones would you have in mind? Like which were done in the wrong way? Like what would be subject of a discussion? Are we talking about documentaries? Well, we were we were uh, cutting I then, which was many years ago, I think. The, you don't even yes. remember. No, that. I remember. Um, we were talking about this this basically in the eighties, nineties, and so on. Those big thematic exhibitions, and I was interested, for example, in Seemann's practice mm -hmm. of coming up with a theoretical concept and just plug in the art wherever he could plug it in, which was sometimes very loose or so, but I thought it was extremely helpful in a way. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I was really sad that those kind of exhibitions stopped. And then then you had, again, doing with our continuous topic of taking over of politics, you had, you had those uh, internally discourse-related uh, mm -hmm. Uh, things, you know, exhibitions. I'm not sure about Simon, whether he really theoret theoretically thought through a concept and then plugged in the artist in. No, he, 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 he thought of a, he thought right. of, I mean, I discussed with him many times and he thought of a historical concept that, like, for example, the Gesamtkunstwerk Ausstellung here, uh, uh, which he thought about in music and uh, started with Wagner and so mm -hmm. on. And then he he developed mm -hmm. it and he was, of course, then researching and looking for okay, things and so on. And I, I always thought that this kind of exhibition was, was really helpful because it was a kind of mixture between an historical approach and a contemporary mm -hmm. approach. It was really, really then, you know, that... Sometimes it became too much, and I couldn't follow his associations in a way. You know, but still, yeah. I thought it to be extremely productive. Can you think of Gesamtkunstwerk as a thematic show? Oh yes, yes. Mm -hmm. absolutely. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Yes. But but what so you're saying, but, but is it the distinction between a, a thematic show that tries to plot a trajectory? Through it's a lie. Through the things. But more. Than this. <laughs> nice hint. That <laughs> <laughs> plots a, a trajectory through um, a historical trajectory or whatever, and a thematic show that that is just about the contemporary. I mean, what did you think of Musician de la Terre in that sense? Because that would be a, a uh, contemporary <laughs> moment. Though. I think it was an interesting exhibition. I hated the exhibition. You saw it. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I went there. Where Clementine took me there. Right. Yeah. Or he, she said I have to go. I yes. Guess, yeah. Because she was so outrageous. Was, yes, it was her arch enemy. <laughs> <laughs> she defined herself as a curator. I think vis-à-vis -vis of Marcia Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and and I also think that her Lotte exhibition was yeah. hundred times better and more interesting. Well, that's that's like I mean, I think it's an important exhibition for your topic here, because yes. that's like the perfect projection of Western images about art mm -hmm. and just then taking. I mean, I could imagine that you could do a, a, a an exhibition 
uh, with uh, Eastern artwork in the same way, where you just have a have a. Uh, uh, I mean, Rosh Hashanah Latad was more complex because we have in modernity we have the the relation to to non-European. Uh, art, mega plastic, Einstein, and so on. So it was it was pretty complex, and and that was the scandal about the exhibition mm -hmm. that it it never analyzed the complexity of the topic in a clear way, you know, because then the guy was just uh, doing very tasty uh, decisions and so on. <laughs> and and uh, 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 but that's 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 the thing. I mean, it's a it's a prime example. Of uh, of continuing a canon of late modernism and just abuse mm. the examples from Africa or wherever they were, you know. And it was, and it was of course also deeply reactionary in the show because it, it was it was like like the 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 when I was bitching about the shows just trying to replace politics in terms of art. This was the show that uh, claimed from a very conservative angle, oh, there is beauty and there is uh, mystery and art. We never understand it. And it's, it's just like uh, to, to clean ourselves from bad conceptual analytic practices. We have to go to shamans in yeah. New Guinea and they will enlighten us, or anti-enlighten us, and that's exactly what should happen. <laughs> <laughs> really without any concept. So yeah. the guy thought, whatever is good, and Hood Actually, doesn't have a bad taste, I mean, he took many things, and then he assembled this show, and the big effect of this show for me was that I couldn't see the artworks anymore. I was literally standing in front of a Stephen Prina thing, yeah. and it was assembled in such a way that didn't recognize it or yeah. so on, yeah. and and that was that was sad because because in a way the Hood show is the turn into the 90s that made the ground for for the later shows, you yeah. know, because then. A person like Katrin David was he was she after? No, yes. was, yeah. Yeah, she was after. Okay. Okay. I mean, she she did a, a, a heroic thing in a way because then she said, no, that's not working anymore. Yeah. So we have to do radical changes, and basically, her achievements and what was good about her show, uh, she was almost killed for for this documenta, and then Enveso took the credits that. Mm -hmm. She invented the yeah. design, yeah. okay. and and but that that's an interesting thing about big shows that you first have a show where uh, some uh, Western museum director is just grabbing together everything he can think about, which is good. And I I was I was quite impressed with the list that Hood had, but there was not a concept anymore. And, and so it became visually so blurry that that uh, yeah. Yeah. it imploded in a, in a certain in a certain way, and then That's a, and, a nice analysis. Yeah. Yeah. And then um, uh, David, who was radical in a way, and completely refused painting. I mean, I was not happy that she refused painting because I always think that there is interesting painting or so on. There but I could understand it. Positions. Yes, yeah, or, James Marshall, for yeah, example. Yeah, yeah. Very early, she showed it. There were a few art. Yeah. But then, what? I mean, she's also. She put a lot of aesthetical uh, energy into mm. the show, and it really looked good and everything. Absolutely. And then the Invesa show, in my view, mm. just had the conceptual part of David, but yeah. not the aesthetic, aesthetic yeah. part of David. So that was that so move towards she's, the, the... She's my hero, if there's another hero of the 90s, it's, it's yeah. that's for sure of David. Yes. Yeah. 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 Agreed. And then, and then the last one, because we should complete the series. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, but it was the obvious question. <laughs> Well, <laughs> let me be very brief and very, very brief. <laughs> Being a Viennese documentary. I think what, <laughs> what, what Berge did in a way, I mean, Berge kind of 
try to re aestheticize can we yeah. say this? Yes. Re aestheticize the thing and he wanted to have nice presentation or so on. But he failed because there was so much bad art. Yeah. Very okay. simple. So I think he he tried a good thing in a way but but uh, was in a way was it moved. To, I mean, there were pieces that I liked, and the, 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 but, but, nice, but, but it was move, as a whole show. It was like well, but, can, but, but, but the move to aestheticization in the show was a move towards the Gesamtkunst um, aesthetic somehow, because what wasn't I mean it was a question. It's, it's you know what, what's interesting to me is that if you compare it with the Ambrose, if you say okay, this is a step to document his back, which you know might be a reasonable thing to do. I understand that. To, to the 92 documentary in some, mm -hmm. in some sense. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's largely from a, um, an aesthetic set of judgments, yeah, mm -hmm. relatively bourgeois, you know, it's consciously bourgeois yeah. set of judgments yeah, from a Raymond Bourne Viennese mm -hmm. you know, with, with that background. No, but I, but I think he, he admits that. Yeah? And, and, but what he does is not allow that aesthetics of the work. Mm -hmm. And I, I, have, I think there's some interesting moments in that documentary still, but he doesn't allow the aesthetics of the work to speak in the way that Jan Hood did. He, uh -huh. he controlled it, you mean, more? Or? He, he created a platform which was far more intrusive, far more aesthetically mm. intrusive. Mm. Now, I'm well, it was a defender of the know, IQ. To, to, but to come back to Magicien de la Terre, yeah. what mm. I also think that he exoticized Positions yeah. Yeah. in a strange way, yeah. Yeah. like the Kerry James Marshall. Yeah. 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 Yes. it's classically yes. exoticized. Yes. That was a real mistake. I yes, but even the the the, the Sophie Kulik. Uh, also, Jan Kriegsmeister. You can can name many. Also, Lan Stilinovich. You know. Yeah, it's it's a very good to remark. I think. But but the, but the thing is that what what you're leading for, which 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 I you know I think we're we we all should be interested in take seriously is this, is this need to create some relationship between aesthetics and politics and politics, you know, yeah. those two politics, relate politics, yeah. and it seems to me that despite the failure he did try to do that you know, it's also what you said in a way that, that there was an attempt to try and after Enrezo in a sense you couldn't get more political I mean I mean, to push it to a further political stance would be to try and stage a revolution. I think. I don't know, yeah, but there, was still there wouldn't be very much. Yeah, there wouldn't be much to go in that direction. But I think there were still too few examples of positions that really tried to do work on both mm. both yeah, sides. Yeah, yeah. Very hard. So there, were, there was this and that and so on, but not so much. Yeah, so... Uh, yeah. Oh. No, so 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 the, the the group show, but I'd kind of be interested just to go back to the institutions for a moment, just to see uh -huh. if there is because because what we've got is 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 the uh, Munich Kunstverein in Hamburg, uh -huh. and is there anything now that you feel excited by, whether it's a gallery or it's a Kunstverein or it's a documenter or it's a, it's the song of Pompidou or something? Not that I can quite imagine that. Or it's a Biennale. Or biennales, which are the other uh, invasive field. I mean, again, it's. I had this this um, um, New York experience last week, mm. and um, the thing that happened to me the third or the fourth times in a row is that, like a madman, I uh, uh, went through all the Chelsea galleries yeah. and. I was extremely frustrated because after about 40 galleries there were two shows I liked. One was a Manzoni show at Big Ocean, yeah. which was a, like a museum show but nicely done, uh, yeah. but not a gallery show. And and then uh, the only good show I saw was the, the Metropolitan show about uh, Renaissance and love. And, and then the Symposium took place in the in the new museum, and there was a Poletna piece there, and, and so on, and everything was nice or so. On. And I love the building; it's a the Sejima building is spectacularly good. But again, the installations in the in the museum just left me 
kind of unsatisfying yeah. in a way. Yeah. You know, I love Paulette Nass. He did this installation about this long shots in the jungle that he did somewhere, and I, I, I love this. But but then I thought, what is this museum about? I for, didn't understand yeah. it. Yeah. It was all, also. I had the feeling that the, the curatorial decisions were let's not risk yeah. anything yeah. and let's yeah. play on the safe side. And, and this, this, this I really have problems with. And other contemporary yeah. institutions. Like so, so, like the galleries, would, I mean, the, the New York galleries just weren't, you know, in terms of the contemporary, there was nothing that, that seemed at all. Touching. Laboratory like or whatever that was no. not. And also, you know, I'm not sure about, yeah, um, by labor laboratory like, I mean that something weird is happening and yeah. I'm confused and I have to think. Yeah. I always like exhibitions where. Uh, if you ask me when I come out, how do you find this? I said, give, you, give me five days or yeah, at least yeah. or so. And, and this is the kind of uh, of missing experience in, in many things. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, you know, about the 90s, what, because we talked about the, sesh, the secession uh, so long, uh, one really important thing was was the, the Generali Foundation, of course, in yeah. Vienna. Again, because they, they kind of did this nice project of doing neglected historical stuff yeah. and just doing theoretical documentations and everything. And then having sometimes, I mean, I went to, for me, it's really bad uh, exhibitions there, but I respected them, obviously. Yeah. You know? and but that's, that's also, kind of when it's just that's also important. Very, very important, you know, that you can come to an exhibition and you really think, that's horrible, and yeah. I'm against this, yeah. but you respect it. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. I think that's the. Uh, I think it's, you know, some of the judgment institution, that's the most ideal reaction. Not the yeah. ideal reaction, but the, you know, the, the reaction you'd expect from people yeah. that would be critical is to say, well, it's, it's seriously wrong. <laughs> <laughs> and then, thanks for being in the 90s. So, outside documentaries. I have such a bad memory. I have such a bad memory. Can I, can I go to the, you remember where the toilet is? Okay. I still remember. <laughs> it's in this room and then the, uh, to the right again immediately. Um, what was it? The Kochmann Spiegel, Broken Mirror, was a typical show of the 90s. It was a typical show of the 90s. Mm. It was an, uh, it was a good show. I think, I mean, I didn't like it again, but I thought, but I didn't think it was a, it, that was an 80s show for me, yes. uh, with material from the 90s. It was very early 90s, no, 91, 92? No. It was very early. I forgot know. completely. Three, three something, I think it's 93 it was, yeah. Uh, that was a festival exhibition. Yes. And yeah, cities on the move, or you know, this cities on the are... move was. I was really impressed by it, absolutely impressed because it was a topic I've. Ne I, ne I learned a lot. Then I researched and I I found out that Hans Ulrich was a bit sloppy about some things, but still it was a good exhibition. Yeah. I think. Yeah, that was really. Mm -hmm. uh, you're right that I shouldn't mention this, because it 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 again. I mean. The exhibition had an extremely interesting aesthetic moment just by this filling up the mm -hmm. space yeah. and by this activities yeah. overflow, the overflow and, and so on. Yeah, that was that was important now. Let me think, was there any good exhibition I saw in Los Angeles? <laughs> All the feminism shows. Well, I like Goldstein, but that's again an historical show. The minimalism show I liked a lot. But contemporary shows of the 90s. But how about like 1993, Sonsberg in the Netherlands? 
Was it something I, that I didn't see no. it? I didn't see it. And is it like theoretically? Is it is it on a theoretical radar? Like is it a show? Yeah, because system? I didn't see it. I mean, I have people. It was not really so, so much discussed in Vienna. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I know that people went and talked about it, but I, I mm. and I, it's so long ago that I don't remember yeah. it, even the discussions about it. So I rather say nothing about it. Venice in 93, no? Was it Aperto in 93? Seaman. Seaman, yeah. Was that... Which one was it? He did the, the next one too, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. No, no that was 99 and 2001. And 2001, but this was 93. Was it already uh, then in the Arsenale? Yes, yes. It was the first. That yes, was the first yeah. that was great, yeah, yeah, I remember this. That was great. I still, I mean, Seaman is, 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 is still a, a hero for me because mm. he had such a, a, a playfulness which was still intelligent mm. and I, I, I liked this enormously. Traffic 96. Where was this? Very yeah, good question. Nicola, Nicola Borea, the relational aesthetics. Uh, oh, oh, no, no, I don't. I didn't see it. And I can only talk about yeah, relational aesthetics. And I mean, that's that's an interesting thing, relational aesthetics, because it's it's a real theoretical invention that I don't have any respect for. I really think it's dangerously stupid as an aesthetic program in a way. But the interesting thing about it is why did it happen? Mm -hmm. Why did people invent it? You know, and and. Again, you know, I, I don't have to talk uh, about this anymore. I think it's because of all those questions we addressed mm -hmm. now, again, with the political. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, you know, so it's an interesting symptom, bad theory, interesting mm -hmm. symptom. What, what do you think, what is bad about it? What do you, I mean, what's, what's the, I, I think we all share our doubts. So, so well, it's not that anybody's going to For me, it it's it. simply not an aesthetic <laughs> theory. Yeah. And I have, you know, Starting with Kant or so, yeah. we have to have minimal assumptions about it, and and it's and it's also the reason it's it's more like a program of a certain art. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's and it sells itself as as a theory, mm -hmm. as a theory. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the main. Judgment. So it's like a manifesto in a way. Yeah, yeah. Something yeah. Like this. Yeah. 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 And it's a manifesto that pleads for. An odd kind of, you know, one of the interesting things you were saying is that, is that it pays for a non-hierarchy between the viewer and the artist. Yeah. And not not funny, when I read today in the newspapers because the Fut Futurist Manifesto is 100 years old. Yeah, yeah that's true. I had a great laugh about reading parts of it and so on. You know. <laughs> yeah. There's no humour in your relation, I said it. <laughs> Then after the wall exhibition, did you see? No. No, no. I went, I mean, I basically, uh, uh, since I'm working so much, I only go to big exhibitions if they're really big and I have to go, or if I'm just there by chance mm -hmm. or so. I don't have, I, I really cannot do it that I, I, I can fly around just to go to exhibitions. Mm -hmm. And post-2000, what's on our list? Post-2000? Utopia Station, did you see that? Did you see that Venice? Oh. What do you think of the Obris phenomenon? Um, there was the Zep the, the, the Wachen in Spiegel. That yeah, there was Kölnigen Obrist. That was the yeah, when, yeah. when yeah. little Obrist yeah. had his first. Yes. Sure. I remember him always on the verge of a nervous yes. breakdown. That was yeah. always the yeah. 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 <laughs> Well, I think that the Obrist phenomenon, um, I have respect for him because he's really trying to find new things. Yeah. But then sometimes I'm getting angry because he's just um, traveling through the world and picks up interesting things and does them in such a sloppy way that uh, it would have maybe better not to have done it at all. You know? mm -hmm. that's, that's, 
uh, I mean, the guy. Did you see like him? The but, yes, yes, we talked about that. Oh, sorry, yeah. Yeah. So I, I, again, you know, I love this exhibition because I learned a lot, and that's that's for me the best. And and but then I I uh, wanted to start to write about architecture too, and I uh, researched especially into Japanese architecture, and then I found out that he was again a bit sloppy, you know. Yeah. Or superficial, just good. Yeah. yeah. But it's I mean it's 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 better than uh, and almost never does boring exhibitions. No. I think. That's true, sure. Well, well, maybe in the certain time it's become a bit more tame now. It's, it's it's an institution for and repetition. For him, it's certainly it's more um, the, the marathon talks, you know. He, I think it's kind of that he created this architectural um, uh, and this, this is his thing, not the shows and the serpent. Right. I, still, I mean, I think what's been really helpful is, is, this, is this way that you describe this, this way, this way that, that politics no longer becomes a becomes a ground on which on which art is built. There's a kind of there's no relationship. As you know, you talk about Al Foster, and then the fact that that that, that you couldn't really say that anymore. Mm -hmm. now. I mean, I mean, for instance, the the 2000 that you talked about Merlin Carpenter. But do you think that in 2000 here, when there was this you know, fairly significant, I mean, we can argue about the significance of Haida and, and uh, the back six No, it was uh, pretty extreme. I mean, yeah, I'm, 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 still, I'm still traumatized to yeah. some extent. And, it, and we, we are, see the consequences only that. now that, 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 you know, we have this leader of the fascist party who's like the third strongest part. I mean, it's like three, three almost equal parties and we have the Social Democrats that follow the fascists in the topics and are yeah. also completely uh, against EU and against foreigners or so. So it's, it was really a, a huge break uh, in the any way unstable yeah. democratic tradition of Austria. So he was completely right. I mean, I'm, uh, about doing this, but again, uh, it was interesting that that. Um, that the artists were immediately having their own discourse about it and then of course certain gallerists after six weeks of the new government went to the ministry. cultural ministry and started to make deals with them and so on so it was completely corrupt in, the, in a certain sense again because they thought well we have the right political opinion anyway as people in, in the art world so why don't we shouldn't give a fuck to go to the minister of this government and cash money or something? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But that, I mean, that, that for me, and you didn't you can see that the, the, the sort of utopian discourse of Hans Ulrich yeah. is is is, and it's also Liam Gillick a little bit, and I, you know, the people that I that I respect. But one thing that that that, that concerns me is that that utopian discourse, that utopian station, that idea of a kind of delayed. Nirvana or whatever that will come, you know, which yeah. you declare yourself to be a utopian, it means you can do virtually any kind of compromise in the present. Because right. What, right, your, right, what right. your objective is is this utopian world where right, everything will be fine, yeah. and and therefore it, it sort of justifies any kind of ethical decision to compromise with power in the at the moment. Now that's probably an old story, but it seems to me to be quite relevant to the an art world which is which is which has been. From which the connection with politics has been has been broken. And utopia, the idea of utopia became a label, you know, it was empty. I think that, and it was interesting how in many uh, curatorial exhibitions it was not a topic in the, in the late 90s. Like the revolution today. Yes. Well, I'm not sure what utopia that. means in the late 90s context because I have the yeah. feeling that sometimes it's just again, we have our little art world and our yeah. rules and yeah. everything there. Yeah. And the yeah. Utopian moment is just yeah. to extend it, yeah. just to offer it as a model and say, well, you, you can all take yes. it. Yes. Be happy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, because I mean, the, the Thomas More Utopia, well, Thomas More Utopia was maybe quite like that as well, actually. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like Utopia has this. <laughs> <laughs> this, 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 so you know, well, here we go. This is, this is something which looks quite nice, and uh, but 
let's not, you know, I mean, Thomas More acted out his utopia in the present, that's why he got his head cut off. But, um, but you know, it was, it was that, that there is a, there, unless there's a relationship between your present actions and your utopian concerns, uh -huh. and I think that's what happens in the 90s, if you sever the link between art and politics, or, and whoever did that is, you know, a question. Did, did 89 happen? Did politics sever the connection or did art sever the connection? Then, then exactly what, what has happened seems to be the consequence. One is that any art can be tolerated. So you could almost tolerate, you know, right populist or even fascist art, I think, under the current circumstances, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, through to, you know, hard left Stalinism. <laughs> and and, uh, and and you can also divorce any of current actions, like going to the ministry, from your political op opinion. So you can say, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a communist, but I'm going to talk to Haider. And, yeah. and it's sustainable, yeah? nobody's going to call you on it. Nobody's going to say, well, if you're a communist, then you can't talk yeah. to Haider. Yeah, Haider would have done it, and incorporated yeah. it into yeah. his system. So that's... Uh, it's a tricky situation to deal with when you don't have politics. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then the real question, and I have no answer to this, and I don't think yeah. anybody does, is what, what is our anchor to? If, if, it's, if, if it's not the market, I mean, that's the only thing we've got. Yeah, it's the market that, it's, that gives the, 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 the reason for art to be or not to be, in a sense. You know, the, 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 if politics once gave the permission for art to be or not to be, then now it's, it's the market. And maybe... But what happens after the, this um, crisis now, you know? Maybe, maybe something else is coming up. Or do it like, like uh, Catherine Evan did it in, in Graz recently when he did the show. Which was a beautiful show. Which was a beautiful show, but it, it, it immediately created a, 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 a Emperor's New Clothes discussion and it was yeah. widely you know, then people became aggressive mm -hmm. about modern art, and so mm -hmm. at least it created yeah. something. I, I, mean, I, was, I was impressed. Did you see this? Where was it in the bubble? Yes, in it the... was an excellent show. It was, it was really it was a great artist, yeah. actually. I think. It's, yeah, really, really strong. And what did he do? Show, he showed the big. I talked to him about the moves planning it, I think. Because it came from Spain, no? Was it, it was no, no, he did no, a no, special it, project there, yes. which was really. Uh, you know, some sounds and, yeah. and so very yeah. a virtual show yeah. also. So, so, so the virtuality yeah. and so the space so was like that came yeah. and said, What is this? We don't see, we want to see stuff and yeah. so on. So this is still an interesting strategy I think, you know, yeah. just to to and it's it's not surprising that this is the strategy that's eternal somehow. Yeah. In, 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 Shall we, shall we stay? feast? Shall we, shall we, shall we? Please, I'm Wrap looking at that. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> strategy that's eternal. I have a lot to look after. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so very much, then. That was interesting. So, yes, it was super interesting. It was speechless. Yeah. So it was very interesting for me because I, I know you.